seems the McGuaks are having a rough time out there. But it seems that Michael Jordan, not that Michael Jordan, mind you, but the one who lives here in Muskegon County is going up for layup. Oh, that's a bad miss. The Tom Berries are literally wiping the floor with Muskington County by a whopping 45 points. There is nothing I can say that could help this team advance. Hey, Kit, how's it? How's it going? Life is a lie, and we're down by 45 points. Wait, who's we? The McGuahawks. The Muskington County Pelinorfields High School McGuahawks. <laughs> That's a mouthful. You got any more words in there? <laughs> You're lucky you're even allowed in the library. After last time? I could have banned you for life. Let's, let's just keep that down. I'm sorry about that. I, I you know, I, I'm in therapy right now, and I'm working through the issues with my stepmom, so Whatever. I, you know, I'm on the road to recovery. But, hold on. Why are you even interested in a high school's basketball game? Pelinor Field is my alma mater. Oh. I did my seven years there. I got out, went to a community college, got bored, came here, killed the lead librarian, and got this job. All thanks to the support and love that I got at Pelinor Fields. Wait, so you killed someone? The McGuahawks represent everything great in this beautiful county. What are you even saying? What is a McGack? That's not important right now. What's important is those bastards from Midgar are killing us right now. Hold on, aren't you being a little bit like over dramatic? I mean, it's just a high school basketball game. No, they are literally killing our players. Look, in tradition with all games between these two rival schools, once three players are killed, sadly, that's the time when all fouls are thrown out. That means no more lawsuits or court proceedings can happen. Look, listen. <laughs> Wait, what? How is this even legal? Hold on, Midgar. How far is that? It's like seven miles away. It's just, it's down the expressway. Right that way. What, like, where have I heard that name before? There's, there's a video game based after, like, the city history. You've, you've probably heard of it. It's pretty popular. Oh, yeah. The Final Fantasy VII remake. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. It's actually really big right now. Everybody's talking about it. I can't listen to any more of this. Do you want to just go to the reading area and sure. talk about it or something? Yeah, yeah, let, let's go, let's go. For the halftime entertainment tonight, Pitbull and Savage Garden are doing their hit. I got your message, so call me when you get your laundry out of the dryer. I think the first thing we're talking about today is uh, Denzel Curry and Kenny Beats record. It's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, it's... Yeah. Sorry. There we go. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I there see. we go. Denzel Curry is a rapper, uh, I'm pretty sure from Florida. And yes. Yeah, yeah. Carol, Carol City, City, Florida. Yeah, Carol City, Florida. And Kenny Beats uh, is a producer who used to be in a group called Wolfpack. He has an online show called The Cave, which is so good. So if you haven't seen the show, it's Kenny Beats uh, invites a rapper to his studio mm -hmm. and he just makes, makes, a, beat. makes like, a beat on the spot and the rapper then raps on it. It's so funny. And it's also really interesting to see the interactions between the different rappers and him. Kenny in the studio trying to suck Damn. Came out real quick, yeah, girl. Damn. 
I'm about to quit. It's really hard to get my phone out of my jeans. I know where you live. This this record was a collaborative record between Denzel and Kenny. It's like an eight track, only like 17 minute album. When they were about to drop the album, they staged actually online like a fake beef, like over Twitter. <laughs> I didn't like, know about that. Yeah. Accompanying it, there's a movie and the movie starts out with them having a beef. Yeah, like they're they're fighting over who leaked the album because the, the tracks are already online. So funny. <laughs> they are they are real they have really good senses of humor and it shows and and on top of that, all the influences throughout the album are just so on point. To me, it's, I think, hands down, one of my favorite hip hop records of all time. Absolutely. It is so ridiculously good. Me, me. This entire record is filled with these just fantastic samples. There's a sample, the Three Finger Joe, I guess that came from like a safety video, hmm. like from some construction company. I used to laugh at safety. Now they call me Three Finger Joe. Yeah, the beats are so insanely textured. And Kenny Beats has this amazing way of keeping his beats extremely moving and, like I said, very yeah. textured, but at the same time, not overloading the listener. In this particular project, I feel like they complement each other so well that it just makes you want to listen over and over again because you want to go, okay, what did I miss in the production? Okay, what did I miss with what Denzel's doing? What did I miss with what they're doing with each other? But in keeping with the, the whole theme that this album is like kind of supposed to be a leak and all that, yeah. the track list, every one of them are named as though they are the working titles for songs. Lay underscore up dot M4A. Yeah. And stuff it's, like that. Yeah, it's just, so... It acts as though it, it, they are just files that you've exported out of Ableton mm -hmm. and sent directly to a friend or something like that. Mm -hmm. Marketing and the, the package, everything is just everything. so good. I've yeah. never seen a rollout like this that's that it all stays on brand. That that isn't to say that that you know no. Kenny Beats is everything. Because no, Denzel not. is no slouch. No, Denzel not at all. Is, it's like 18 minutes of Denzel finding a new way to brag and like <laughs> talk about himself. But it's every single time it's so much more hilarious and funny yeah. and just he, you can tell that these two are really good friends. There's so many lines that are just it's just quotables oh, absolutely. on quotables on quotables. And there's times where you're sitting there going, wait, is he referencing this? And even when you're going through something like the genius lyrics and you're, you're seeing the ones that are like official, officially said, verified. oh yeah, this is, yeah. this is verified. This is for sure. You're still going, but they didn't mention this line. And I'm pretty sure he's talking about this in so incredible or so dot incredible dot PKG. P PKG. Uh, <laughs> there's so many references to, to kids shows and the movies that we grew up with or stuff that we saw that our siblings grew up with. Like he references Captain Planet. I'm pretty sure he references Atlantis, the Lost Empire. Yeah. I know he references A Bug's Life and Star Wars. Whenever I listen to it, I just get excited yeah. because I'm just like, oh, oh, this is so great. Oh, I can't believe it. The first thing when I ever heard it, I remember thinking to myself, this feels like two teens that got suspended in high school and they're spending that time at one of their friend's house and like they're just making the best Dat Piff uh, mixtape ever. <laughs> yeah. It just, it reminded me a lot of when I was in middle school and my brother and I would get home from school and we'd, we'd like run down the driveway because we, we, we lived in the middle of nowhere. And we, we would throw our bags on the floor. And the minute we got home, we'd hop on the couch and we'd watch Toonami. Toonami. It reminds me of back when Toonami had those TV bumps. Yeah. 
and yes. when it would sample different parts of different animes or different shows that are on and it would it, it would always have like this message and it they were just so incredible and you just you mm. and <laughs> catharsis it's like take it back lay up and pyro those three tracks mm -hmm. are all very grimy oh yeah they said they were inspired by Wu-Tang yeah. and in some of like the bass lines and just like I said how grimy it is like it feels like that he also has a uh... Navidius, the futuristic version of the avid kid activist, everybody lean on me. Yeah, yeah, that whole future reference, and that's... That's, that's, that's Future's first name. Both uh, So Incredible, Dot Package, and Cosmic, those, to me, are my favorite tracks on the record, mm -hmm. specifically Cosmic. Oh, Cosmic absolutely. is... It, it sincerely... Now, I know how you were talking about Toonami earlier. That feels like Toonami. Mm -hmm. That beat is so spacey. Mm -hmm. It's so good. If I had to nitpick and make mm -hmm. one criticism on it, both uh, So Incredible and Cosmic are a little bit more, they have a little bit more of like a melody to it. Yeah. And I wish there were, there were there just, just a couple more. Yeah, just a couple more tracks that were like that. But besides that, I, you know, I, I can't, incredible. I can't ask anything more. Every track was, was, Pyro. I'll put little flames right here. <laughs> Fuego. One of my favorite things in that song is both Kenny and Denzel working off each other. What blew my mind is Kenny finishing, finishing lines. lines that uh, Denzel is saying. You shooting in VR, we got guns in. And Reality. Then it says, yeah, and then Kenny Beats has the sample that says reality right at the end. My hat was on the floor. It was just, it was, it was gone. Socks were off. I shit the bed. <laughs> shit my pants. Right here? Shit my pants, you're kidding. You can ship your pants right here. You hear that? I can ship my pants for free. Wow, I just may ship my pants. Accompanying this album is the movie. Yeah. It starts out live action yeah. where they're they're fighting. They're, they're fighting, they're pretending that they are mad at each other. And then he like <laughs> brings out like this homemade helmet. They're able to go into the internet. into the internet and into a computer. So they took heavy inspiration from It is that fairly odd parents <laughs> yes. episode. The rest of the entire movie's animated and as they're picking up each file, it's a different style of animation. I love how picking up each track comes off as though it's a level of a video game. Yeah, 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 it, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, you've completed the level. All right, here's your, you're winning this. Yeah. So many of them are really cool. But once again, we're going back to Cosmic because that one is incredible. It, it's like borderline rotoscoping, but it's so gorgeous. Yeah. You can feel the cowboy bebop influences there. Yeah. Because there's a fight scene that goes on between Bizarro, Kenny, and Denzel. And it literally plays out almost exactly like the beginning of Cowboy Bebop. That's, again, not to say that any of the other ones weren't. The Klee Animation one is insane, just the level of detail. Beyond that, all of them were really cool. I liked all the re the visual references to Uzumaki in, uh, in the earlier track. Uzumaki is a manga written by Junji Ito. He has some of the most terrifying subject matter. It's set in a town that's next to the sea that is infested with spirals. And there are so many references in the video that it just, it, it, it tickles me, it tickles me. Yeah, kind of in conclusion, but I just think that two people, both Denzel and Kenny, or, no, just two people. Two people that have the gall to make this bizarre idea come true and take all these references and just make it in this awesome fucking album or project show movie what yeah since it's a movie show record whatever it is it, you know that's just really inspiring so yeah okay <laughs> i just really want a new album by Kenny Beats and Denzel Curry. And I hope they make it in a hurry. But I don't want no curry. 
All I want is bubblegum. Bazooka, zooka, bubblegum. Bubblegum, bazooka, zooka, bubblegum. Some gum. Did you want to talk about Final Fantasy? Yeah, 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 sure. I'm gonna try and keep this spoiler free. I know it's a remake of a 23-year-old game, but... All I knew about the game was a twist that a lot of people know about the game. Yeah. That's the only thing I knew about this Which story. fortunately doesn't happen in this installment, yeah. because this is just... The first, uh, basically the first disc of the original. The original game split up into multiple areas. This is just Midgar. Even if you did play the original game, there is going to be new stuff for you in it, and I think that's what's so nice about it. This is probably the most accessible Final Fantasy game. Oh, definitely, definitely, ever. definitely. I'll be the first to admit I haven't played all of them. I believe there's over thirty of them. I think I've played like six. My relationship with like turn-based RPGs and turn-based action, it's not something I'm into. It slows everything down to a halt. I think it works for Pokemon. <laughs> Here we go, all the subscriber count is just gonna fall right now. I'm not into Pokemon really at all. True. Well, why are you boring me, I'm right. Quick, I've gotta <laughs> save the <laughs> I've gotta save the channel. I own one! I own one! <laughs> I only played about like two or three hours of, of Pokemon Red when it first came out. And about three hours in, I got stuck at something that I'm assuming was probably pretty simple. I just couldn't figure it out when I was like five. And I was like, eh. I just, ne <laughs> I just never went back to it. It doesn't help that among some of the first games you ever played was Doom, which is probably one of the most fast-paced video games, period. Yeah. Yeah, my dad, uh, my dad let me play that when I was like three. <laughs> We're in a, a library! library. <laughs> if you don't know, Final Fantasy is a series of anime-ish fantasy games yeah. that don't actually connect but they all have kind of like similar themes to them. What is uh, Final Fantasy VII about? You play as Cloud, who is a mercenary. He has been hired by a militant Greenpeace Corps. They want to save the Earth. It's very grounded. It's set in kind of a dystopian future-ish setting where there is a giant corporation that runs a city, which is elevated above the slums in a physical manner, and they are stealing energy from the planet in order to power that city. It's Greenpeace with guns, really. Yes. <laughs> with a gun arm. With a gun arm. <laughs> You're fighting back against? Shinra. Shinra, who is? Who is the leader of the corporation. It's, it's the Shinra power company. As you progress, you get more reasons for why you want to fight. So before this, I'd played about 10 minutes of Final Fantasy X. <laughs> and I was not feeling that at all. The only one I played fully through, I played 15. For some reason, I was like so excited about the game. I think it's just I'm more drawn to the Final Fantasy games where it isn't strictly high fantasy. There's cars and it's modern and futuristic, but it still has that Final Fantasy-ness to it. The elements of fantasy. And that's very much uh, 15. In Final Fantasy 15, you, you're in a boy band group, basically, and you're t it's just taking a road trip with your friends. That's the- m The beginning. The beginning of the game. And that was so good. I had such a great time. It was so weird. For some reason, they were always shirtless. It didn't make any sense. I, 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 it, it, it was a great time, bonding with these weird- Ramen loving. Ramen loving, pseudo American boy band group. Yeah. Something dawned on me when I was on my own. Any food you make tastes better when you use good ingredients, right? 
Then, if you take something already delicious like cup noodles and add in the finest, freshest ingredients, what do you get? The ultimate flavor experience. And then it got shitty later. But <laughs> and really, really convoluted. And I think that was kind of what ultimately put a lot of people off from it. That in order to understand the story for that game, you had to watch a movie, then read into the lore a little bit, because even then you don't really get everything. Yeah. And then play the game. While you're playing the game, you still need to look up some of the lore, because some of it's not fully explained. It's a heavily flawed game. You can tell that it's made by two different people, but mm -hmm. it's, it's a good game at heart. But... Uh, I was interested in this game, partially just because I'd heard everyone always calls like seven the best one. Yeah. I played it and I had a great time. It It is very grounded. The save the environment message, that's for the most part, at least for this first uh, installment. For this first installment. There are people who own the original PS1 discs and play them often. There are people who have bought it on every single console it's been re-released to. There are people who are so diehard they've read all the fan fiction, even the crappy ones. I'm not any of those things. <laughs> I pre-ordered Final Fantasy Advent Children when it came out. I play Kingdom Hearts. So I, I kind of got to see a lot of them slowly bringing it into the newer era. I loved Crisis Core. I was so excited for this and it didn't disappoint. A lot of the changes are subtle and a lot of the overall story is intact, so it still has a lot of nostalgia value, even though I don't remember it as well as I'd like to. I had known nothing about the original yeah. plot of the game. I I didn't even expect that to be the story, because I expected it to be like a mythical dragon man that had the dark crystal of light in the kingdom of Terabithia, and they need to throw the ring back into the eye of Sauron's cauldron. <laughs> and, sorry. <laughs> and since it's anime, all the boys have to be shirtless. Like, they're still wearing their shirts, but they gotta be open. And there's and there's girls with big, uh, uh... Unreasonably large balloon bazookas. Yeah, that's what I thought the game was, kind of originally. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was all that sort of fluff, but it's not, it's next to none of that at all. It, yeah. It has a little bit, but. Yeah, it has a little bit. But um, I just love how slow the pace is in the game. It introduces maybe like one new character at a time yeah. or one new idea. I love how it spoon feeds you lore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As yeah, it's giving yeah. you lore, it makes it very organic and it focuses on trying to give it to you in a way that fits with the story. There's certain times where they'll mention a name, but they won't mention what it is. Eventually, over time, you're able to put the context clues together and like yeah. figure out what they're talking about. But besides certain instances where it's like a character that doesn't know something, it makes you kind of figure it out, but it gives you all the pieces that you need. Yeah. And that's what's like dope about it. You know? Yeah. The game is incredibly beautiful. I just love watching the cutscenes because just seeing all the characters, how the hair falls on shoulders, and it's just like amazing to watch. Yeah. The only real graphical issue is with poppin. It's usually texture poppin, specifically on doors for some reason. Yeah, doors and, and certain weird environment stuff. Yeah, you'll notice it. Don't get me wrong, you will notice it, but you don't notice it as much as you could, and it doesn't take away as much from the game as you would expect. Midgar is kind of the star of the show. Yeah, yeah. As someone who has played the original, I already knew what Cloud and Aerith and Tifa would look like. I was surprised by how amazingly detailed and beautiful the world was, how beautiful Midgar was. They added a lot to it to make it more filled out, and I don't think that was wasted at all. And I think the odd jobs really kind of cemented that RPG field. My only real gripe about the odd jobs is when they're mini games. Yeah. I feel like that's kind of where it, it the pace slows to a crawl and when I get the most frustrated because the mini games range from, wow, this is not that great to, oh my God, I hate this. Yeah. But at the same time, I can't really complain because a lot of them are carried over from the original, like mm -hmm. the Squats mini game. I didn't like it then. I don't like it now, but I can't really complain for them trying to stay true to the original game. That's how it's done. 
Your form's yeah. looking good. Not bad at all. But yeah, overall, the the combat's good in this game. It's a lot of fun to play. The story's great. I can't wait, because since this is only the first third of the game, they're releasing the next two, or well, the next couple. In the future. In the future. All of it is really well developed. I would be remiss not to mention the development they did with Cloud. He doesn't come off as the... Sometimes I think I should just get on my bike and go sort of character that I thought he was going to be. He's he's a little bit more well-rounded. He's very quiet. He's probably the most grounded character because while in a lot of anime, for instance, or other video games, once something happens, something goes wrong, that's when the protagonist is like, I need to step up and help. Believe it. When stuff goes wrong after the first mission, Cloud's just kind of like, where's my money? <laughs> Two dollars. I like that over time he develops. Yeah. He he becomes better friends or better connected to the people that he's working with. It's refreshing. And I think a lot of that character development came from other mediums. So like Advent Children and mm -hmm. Kingdom Hearts, the bits that you saw of his character in those really helped cement who he is in this. In this, he is a person. Yeah. Yeah. He gets yeah. annoyed. He, he gets upset. He looks good in a dress. You know. Wait a minute. <gasps> Cloud? Is that you? Oh my god, that makeup and that dress. Nailed it. I know. Thank you. Moving on. They don't play up the fact that he's in a dress beyond him being incredibly embarrassed and just not wanting to talk about no, it. Oh, yeah. Sexuality, gender, and like... Very all, fluid. All of that in the game is very fluid, and I think that's super dope. Andrea is a character who... He's not a joke. And Cloud doesn't really care that he's getting, like, hit on. No, not at all. He does a dance number with them. There's Avalanche, which is that eco group that you're with. In the original, that eco group, Avalanche, had three members at least, which is Biggs, Jesse, and Wedge. That's it. They exist, they're part of Avalanche. In this one, they're people. Wedge used to be just a fat joke. That was his whole purpose. But he's more than that now. Wedge feeds strays. He cares about his crew members. Jesse was an actress and Biggs used to help run an orphanage. Knowing more about these characters is a good thing. It compels you to care for them. You want them to succeed. You want to see them pull through. You want this to work out. Barrett's kind of like the head, well, not the head of Avalanche, but he's- He's the head of the faction that you are working with. He's an interesting character. He has a daughter. His portrayal is interesting. Iffy at times. <sighs> well, that's all well and good. If you're only out for yourself. But the folks down there, don't have the luxury of choice, you know? I'm Team Jesse all day long. Team Jesse, uh, shouts out on the Discord. Uh, you can find me at angelfire.com. Jesse, lover, 95, uh, XX. This is not a perfect game. It is a wonderful game. It is not perfect. And I have one, I have a few <laughs> moderately sized gripes. Moderately sized. <laughs> Torpedo sized gripes. Boob plates, really? Is it necessary to have torpedo boobs? Yeah, the, yeah, it's, it's, uh. <laughs> They're sharp. Yeah. It's not only unsafe, but just impractical to have boob plates. That little divot in the middle is like a metal arrow to the heart. I think the thing that bothers me more is that it wasn't a super pronounced thing in the original. Yeah. So why did she go from somewhat sensible to boob plates. Yeah. There are some places a sword just can't reach. <laughs> There's uh, Aerith, who she's someone that you end up kind of like meeting along the way. She isn't part of Avalanche, but you, no. you meet her along the way. Cloud doesn't really know much about her, but you end up finding more about her later on in the game. Yeah. And she's one of those characters where the redesign was really, really nice, honestly. And then they added extra little details. If you look closely to her dress, there's floral embroidery on it. Also, she has that little open-petaled 
flower bolero. A lot of different features of her outfit kind of tie back into the whole idea that she is a flower seller. Here, this is for you. Her? A flower? That's right. It's a gift. You know, for scaring those things away. And then there's Tifa. And Tifa's the other, like, potential sort of romantic yes. interest. She's another, from the original game, that yeah. you could potentially go go for. She runs a bar. Yeah, um, she's a member she's, of Avalanche. She's, like, the girl next door, yeah. basically. That's, yes. that's the stereotype yes. that she is. She's, she's yes. the girl next door. She can take care of herself, but she's still kind of naive. Sweet girl next door who runs a bar. And she knew Cloud from, before, like, way back in the day. Speaking of Tifa... There was a controversy. The first couple trailers that they put out for this Final Fantasy didn't have Tifa in them. And there was a bit of a kerfuffle that occurred. A bunch of guys were like, B -b 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 and girls. Oh, I don't there's, know. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess guys and girls. There's a very large fan community. I don't judge. Very large fan community that was worried that Tifa's chess puppies would be shrunken down because of the newer Sony censorship rules. Do they affect your character? How would the size of Tifa's fun bags negatively impact the story? Yeah. Yeah. But look at those yabos! Yo, yo, my. I deserve those yabos. <laughs> yeah, the the bazongas are, are are there. Boutros, boutros, golly. I'll give them kudos for not doing over the top boob fit physics though. Yeah. They do yeah. jiggle, but that's <laughs> Welcome to our review of Final Fantasy VII. They jiggle. <laughs> that's that's, <laughs> that's the end of the review. Good night, everyone. <laughs> So this week we talked about Denzel Curry and Kenny Beats's uh, Unlocked. Unlocked. It was a great, fun time. Absolutely I would excellent. Recommend this to any anyone that likes any hip hop. You should take a listen to this. And even if you don't, you might find some interesting stuff that you'd enjoy. Yeah, it's excellent. Awesome. Ah, oh, it's so bloody long. This makes you wanna throw up. We also played Final Fantasy VII remake. Yeah, I had a great time. If you aren't into that sort of fan servicey stuff, it's, you should you should definitely check it out. Like it it's great. Or if you like fan service, it's got a little bit of that as well. So yeah, just it's you small know. bits. If you pick the mature dress. Yeah. It it's it was a great game. The game. Oh my god, it seems as though the Tonberries have gotten bored and left. With only one player left, Kevin the Bacon only needs to score one more basket to win the game for the McGlocks. And he makes it. The McGlocks win. I cannot believe it. My mother was wrong about me. I wanted to become a sports commentator. She wanted me to become an accountant. Oh my god. Oh my god, that's so amazing. They won. They, they won the game. I, I don't even know how they did it. I'm excited. That's great. I just, I just, I still have just one more question. Yeah. What is a McGack? I, I have this. We, we can. Okay. So everything you need to know about the McGuahawks are in this. Understanding Science, Volume Five: The Classification of Living Things. No, no, that that's not what it actually is. Go ahead and open it up. Huh. It's really cool, actually. Our mayor had a surplus of these, and you know, reduce, reuse, recycle. It's good for the environment. So cool. Well, I'm yeah. I'm ready to learn. Sorry, it just might take a couple minutes for me to. No, you're all good. And sorry about earlier. I don't, I didn't mean to rain on your parade. I know if you're a big sports person, that's you. I, I guess I just don't really understand the hype behind it you know i get what you mean but i feel like at the end of the day everybody has their own thing that they're excited about whether it's television anime sports video games 
when you see someone that you were really, really rooting for succeed, it's incredibly exciting because your support helps them get to where they are. So it's okay if you don't like sports. It's okay if you don't like video games or anime. At the end of the day, what you like is what you like. That's all that matters. It's true. So I understand what a tonberry is, but what is a McGuack? That's that's a fair question. Why don't we just watch? Okay. Hello there, I'm Ben Sparks. Some of you watching may even call me Mayor. The rest of you, stop this tape right now. I don't need you visiting or tampering with the sanctity of our great Muskington County. I don't need you, but you need me. Unless you're buying property on my land, then get the- Mr. Sparks? Oh, this is useless. Get it together and bring it back to me. For sure, for sure. Now, where was I? This documentary is for those egghead types that want to learn more about our reclusive, exclusive, lucrative county bird, the majestic McGee Hawk. Now, if you're from Muskington County, I'm sure you're familiar with the origin story. It's legendary. But if you haven't and you need a refresher, then take a look. I don't tell stories. I let them tell they self. Toby McGuire purchased a hard-boiled egg, only after having swallowing it whole. I don't feel well. I'm gonna go to sleep. Did he realize that it was a magical, uncooked hawk egg? After days of intense gastrointestinal pain, he woke the next morning with his body that of a hawk. Uh, excuse me there, Ben. Uh, how'd you get this job as mayor? That is a great question, interviewer. This job, I ain't choose it. That thing chose me. But enough about me. I think it's time for you all to learn more about our fair county, the great bird that inhabits it, and how my actions positively impacted the habitat of this beast. Enjoy a snippet of this educational documentary funded by and written by yours truly. Of all the pieces of Muskington County history, no history is as historical as the majestic McGuayhawk. Native to the northern Midwest, these magnificent creatures primarily prey on small children. Despite this, they are shy, living primarily in mountains, quiet until provoked. It is difficult to capture footage of this creature due to its almost completely introverted nature. One day whilst hiking to keep their fit body in shape, Mayor Sparks was miraculously able to capture this footage of the bird taking flight before letting out a call. Shazam! 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 The earliest known record of this bird was in 1961. President Kenny was seen attending a children's birthday party with McGee Hawk on his shoulder. Witnesses later described the bird fleeing the scene with the birthday boy. President Kennedy has never commented on the affair. NASA is currently working on a virtual experience so that the common man can learn about these majestic beasts. Training has not been attempted, and their appetite has made conservation efforts difficult. Territorial by nature, they are also very mean. Hmm, fascinating. After you watch this documentary, Go out there and see to it that the world keeps on moving. Whatever it is you do, you do it admirably, I'm sure. I guarantee you will enjoy this full, unfiltered documentary or my name isn't Benjamin Bubba Sparks. Put a tad on it, then see what it